Hi there, I'm the underscore twig and I like analysing game rules. I said that I was going to be responsible and take a break so I could study. Let's talk about cantrips. First though, let me tell you how you can learn the friends cantrip in real life. If you join my Patreon, you can turn any parasocial relationship you may have with me into a real relationship involving the transaction of money. Seriously though, I do appreciate the help these guys give me. Every UA we have a discussion about the content and it's good fun. As always, big thanks to SK for the extra support, and I just want to apologise to Jumpy Sonic Bear and Caparius for my mistakes in the last video. Right, cantrips. There's only two pages, so not much to go over. I'm just going to rapid fire these for the most part, since lots of changes are fairly surface level. Acid splashes first. Two changes. First, the school change from conjuration to evocation, for the absolutely minuscule number of situations where that matters, and the damage is now a five foot sphere instead of just two adjacent targets. It's a buff, but it's not a big one. Probably still not a top pick, but it's an option. Skipping Blade Ward because I want to do that last, Chill Touch. It's a touch spell now. The name half makes sense. It's still necrotic, not cold though, so you can't win everything. The damage got increased from D8s to D10s to compensate for the range, but it also lost the undead disadvantage effect. I think this is overall a nerf. As much as everyone complained about Chill Touch not being touch, the fact that it was healing denial was its entire niche and that's not so useful if you're putting yourself in danger to do it. I think that this has probably gone from my favourite secondary attack cantrip to one I'll rarely take. Friends is next. The range has changed from self to 10 feet, which makes far more sense, and the effect has had a big rework. It's now a whiz save to charm a humanoid for one minute concentration. It still ends if you do anything offensive, but it no longer automatically makes them hostile, which is nice. You can't spam it though, because it doesn't work on anyone you've cast it on in the last 24 hours, whether they passed or failed. This now competes even harder with Charm Person, but I'm not too worried about that. Charm Person is one hour non-concentration and is also a leveled spell, not a cantrip. Spells prepared and cantrips known are two very different resource pools. Poison Spray is next. It's gone from Conjuration to Necromancy, and is now a 30 foot attack roll cantrip. Definitely better, but I'm still not sure I'm convinced by it. Produce Flames is an odd change. It's now a bonus action cantrip which produces as much light as the light spell, and attacking with it doesn't end the spell, so you can keep the illumination. The range also increases to 60 feet. This is undoubtedly a buff, and it's actually not a bad option for fighting in the dark if you don't have dark vision. This is actually semi-relevant for Druid, because they only have two cantrips at first level, so this effectively combines light and their attack cantrip into one. Still not top tier, but good enough to consider. Shillelagh is up next. Two changes. First, it now gives a variable damage type of the normal damage type, which should always be bludgeoning, or force. Second, the damage now scales. It's d8 at first level, d10 at fifth level, d12 at eleventh level, and 2d6 at seventeenth level. It's a solid upgrade. It still falls off without extra attack, obviously, but it is now definitely a more interesting option for something like a ranger multiclass. Shocking Grasp. It lost the advantage against Metal Effect, which is honestly probably a good thing. That just encouraged new players to have their wizard run into danger, because they had the cantrip that did cool stuff against Metal. It now only prevents opportunity attacks though, rather than all reactions. In the design notes over here, it says that shutting down all reactions is too powerful for a cantrip. In response to that, I have to say… was it? I'm not going to do a full analysis of monsters in this video but only about 7.5% of monsters have reactions listed in their stat blocks, and many of those are just things like parry, which just increase AC, so they could be used in response to Shocking Grasp anyway. Using Shocking Grasp was never better than just disengaging, which in turn often wasn't better than just moving away and eating the opportunity attack. But now, the tiny, minuscule other niche for Shocking Grasp has been removed. Don't like this change. Spare the Dying has been added to the Druid list, which I must admit I actually didn't realise it wasn't already on. It also gets a range of 15 feet now, which increases to 30 at 5, 60 at 11, and 120 feet at 17th level. That's much better. Like, extremely much better. Sadly, the completely busted Druid and Paladin version has been reverted. It's no longer basically just cure wounds on a cantrip. It can now affect undead and constructs though, which is nice for any golem NPCs you might have. The last one is True Strike, which has received a full rework. It was previously an absolute joke, so a rework is good to see. True Strike is now an instantaneous attack cantrip, which allows you to make a single attack roll with a weapon, but using your spellcasting modifier for the attacking damage rolls. 
It also adds variable damage for Radiant, and deals an additional d6 at 5, 11 and 17. Assuming you're using a light crossbow, which is a d8 weapon, this is now the best damage cantrip for most characters, until Agonizing Eldritch Blast and d12 cantrips start out damaging at 5th level, and d10s out damage at 11th level. The ABEB comparison is including the fact that you can apply Agonizing Blast to this True Strike now, which allows you to add double your spellcasting mod. Interestingly, the Celestial Warlock can actually add triple their spellcasting mod because it does radiant damage. This means that their True Strike actually does more damage than EB until 11th level, except for a small blip at 5. Overall, this new True Strike is way stronger, but that's probably fine. Marshals have fighting styles, weapon masteries, rages, and sneak attacks, all of which mean that they aren't really being challenged on the damage department here. Finally, we're returning back to Blade Ward. This cantrip also got a full rework. It's now a reaction cantrip, which gives a creature disadvantage on one attack roll against you. My first impression was something along the lines of, great, it's a good strong defensive option. My second thought was, oh god, it's cantrip shield. Having considered it further, I actually don't think it's that bad, but I do have two issues with it. First, when selecting cantrips, normally the first thing you think about is your attack cantrip. Focusing on the arcane casters for now, do you want Fireball or Toll the Dead to maximise damage, or do you want to make the better choice of Rare Frost because the slowing effect makes it better than both of those? Alternatively, do you want to be a support caster with Mind Sliver or Frostbite? Or do you want to choose the best spell in 5e, Magic Stone? Next, you look at utility options. Good options include almost every cantrip beginning with M, as well as Light or a secondary damage cantrip. Blade Ward also fits in here. On Bard and Warlock, you only have two cantrips, so you might want to pick Minor Illusion or something. But on Sorcerer and Wizard, you have more. Give me one good reason why you aren't picking this on your Sork or Wiz. At low levels, they typically aren't using the reaction for anything other than shield anyway. And this doesn't use spell slots, so it's probably better when the monsters only have one attack per turn. The second issue is that this slows down play. Imagine I'm your DM. Right, you just blasted this goblin with your True Strike crossbow, and he's angry. He wipes the blood out of his eyes, spits on the ground, and then runs at you with a sword drawn, and attacks you with an 18 of... Sorry, what's that? I'll use Blade Ward. Okay, let me re-roll that. Um, it's a 6. He misses you. This just ruins the flow and the verisimilitude of the game, and I think that's a major problem. Shield doesn't do this, because it's just a numerical modifier. This is an issue unique to Blade Ward. So, how do we fix it? I came up with two options. First was to make it a bonus action that gave disadvantage on the first attack before your next turn. This would fix the slowdown issue, but then I realised that making a cantrip that was a bonus action dodge would actually probably be a buff, and a big one at that, so uh, let's scrap that idea. Second was to keep it as a reaction, but also keep the old resistance to BPS effect, just only against one attack. This also fixed the timing issue, since it's a numerical modifier, not a reroll. It also just decreases damage, rather than having a chance to wipe it out entirely. It's still probably a top tier option though, maybe even a must have. So I then thought, does Blade Ward even need a buff? It's definitely not one of the go-to options for cantrip selection, but I sometimes see it picked as a fourth cantrip on a warlock, or maybe when multiclassing. And it sometimes gets used very effectively when trying to hunker down in a cramped space or whatever. A cantrip that is strong in specific situations is good enough in my opinion. I know it's one that sometimes gets complained about though, so maybe it does need a little bit of a buff. Maybe just give it resistance to all BPS, so it can protect you from falling. Or maybe give it additional resistances to elemental damage as well, so you can use it when the dragon looks like it's breathing in for its breath weapon. So yeah, overall not a fan of the new Blade Ward. It's strong, but I don't think it's better for the game. That's all of the cantrips. Mostly small tidy ups, except for True Strike and Blade Ward, and Friends got a moderate change. I like most of the changes here, other than Blade Ward and Shocking Grasp and Chill Touch I'm more just sort of disappointed about, even though it's literally just what everyone has been asking for for years. Will I do a video on Bastions? Don't know, we'll see how my studying goes. I think that a tier list of special facilities might be fun though, so if you want to maybe see that, subscribe so you don't maybe miss it. I'm going to go and learn about Deferred Tax now. Bye!